Did the Cowboys discover and unearth like an all time great? Like this is this is insane. It really is, and we don't talk about it enough. I think we did last year when he was on his run. Brandon Aubrey with the 66-yarder, which Next Gen says would have been good from 72. Yeah, look, I mean, I think it's obvious they unearthed a, a greatest of all time because we've heard whispers that... Uh, or does it just take a two-week span like a reliever in baseball to have it go right downhill? Knock on wood. Well, we know it can because Brett Maher going the whole 20, what, 22 season, play, you know, kicking as well as he did. They were just as soon as he missed extra points in one game, like, oh, you're broken. You're done. Uh, but look, I think the difference is we know we've heard whispers. Brandon Aubrey, morning show listener. Oh. We, we've heard chatter about this. Uh, and so I think that that alone shows that he's uh, he's a mentally tough individual. He's <laughs> he, he's got a lot of good things going for him. A, a guy clearly of good character and good mind. <laughs> um, and so I, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. But the dude's clearly got just a ridiculous, booming Sebastian Janikowski leg. 36 of 38 last year, including a record 35 straight to start a career. From 50 plus yards, he was 10 of 10 including a 60-yarder against Filthy. He also hit, that. by the way, that 66-yarder, Next Gen said, had an 8% probability of going through the uprights. He had a 53-yarder to start the game. The only star down, he then immediately kicked it out of bounds. Yeah. It was right out of bounds, but, man, this would have equaled the NFL record set by Justin Tucker in 2021 if this was in the regular season. And I'm like, is this... Is, is this guy an all-time crazy? Did they, did they find Larry Allen kicking the football here? Wasn't the uh, wasn't the Tucker one too? Didn't that hit the crossbar? Didn't it bounce? Oh in? yes, and I so think. Tucker. Uh, I mean, that look. It, it takes a Longhorn to be that good to even get in that kind of you know area. Sorry, with that I need kind of a, power, I, I need a lower draft pick than Larry Allen. I need a fifth or sixth amazing find. Larry was Tom Brady in the second. The Tom sixth was, rounder, Tom Brady. Trying to keep the Cowboys, but whatever. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. So obviously, star up to Brandon Aubrey, and I think Mike McCarthy. Theory, just a theory. I think he gets like this real sick satisfaction out of the kicking game. Oh he yeah, loves having a booming weapon out there. I mean, years ago, Mike would just try, you know, sixty yarders. It felt like or fifty eight yarders. He just loves having a kicking weapon, I think. That's his kink. A big leg That's is, his is, kink. is Mike McCarthy's kink. He loved Mason Crosby. He loved Brett Maher, Greg the leg. He wants the booming leg. That's what he's a big fan of. And look, it's it is an absolute weapon. If you're if you're down three with fifteen seconds left and you just got, you know, a touchback or something like that, you it's it's a weapon to be able to have to say, man, we've just halved how far we have to go before we have to kick the ball with most kickers. And so definitely a weapon, and he's he's really, really impressive. He you, thought about giving, McCarthy thought about giving Aubrey a chance at a 72-yarder against the Rams, but he said, quote, Bones wasn't feeling it. Let's, <laughs> what, not, let's what, not blow out a leg here. And, I, and Aubrey was involved in a tackle in this Raider game, and I was like, stay the freaking hell away from the sideline and any football player. This is how you know that Mike McCarthy's a kicker guy and, and is a little little crazy about him is that Bones Fossil, the madman Bones Fossil, was like, absolutely not. Don't do that. What are you talking about? Yeah. Like, the Bones thought that was too aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Should tell you everything. How have you, uh, you mentioned the kick out of bounds. How have you felt about the kickoff so far? I don't like it. It's just too complicated. I hate, I, I hate the name of it. I hate that they gray out the area or I... I don't see how there's going to be any returns actually made. It feels like that's just not happening. I, again, not used to it. So a lot of times you don't like things that you're just not used to. 6 a.m. start time for some tolos. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't like it right now. It's just, it's so I don't like the way it's lined up. Oh, it's so complicated. It, it, it feels so. The it, drop zone. I, I like I like the idea of the. All right, put the put the defenders on the other side, and I understand they're trying to, you know, not have the booming kicks out of the end zone. To me, don't you just move the ball back? Isn't that a like? Isn't that an easier situation? Move the ball back like five yards from where they have to kick it, and then have the, the exact same setup. But the whole the drop zone and where it can go, 
that's that to me is going to be incredibly frustrating all year. Other game notes from this win over the Raiders, 27 to 12 on this radio station. Mozzie Smith missing with an allergic reaction. Insert your joke here, as many Tolos did on Twitter and X. Allergic to success, allergic to contact. Allergic to hard coaching, allergic to, you know, back-to-back plays. Yeah, we got a lot of that. (laughs) Uh, In fact, we did get the uh we get did the we got the Blake Elliott type phone call uh post game it sounded like there were they're like allergic reaction like come on are, are we really believing this guy has allergies uh so there was a little bit of the oh, I thought Blake's phone call was are they playing in the state of Las Vegas <laughs> <laughs> it's, no. it's geographical sense so Mozzie allergic reaction but Jordan Phillips already on the field Dude, right out there instantly and made a difference. Like it was the first play, I think, where he he had kind of sealed up the gap and they were able to make a play on it. And so Jordan Phillips, I, I thought that was in, you know, good to see him out there that early. Marshawn Nealand making the play he did uh, on in the run. The first game, that's back to back games now where he's done the same sort of thing, which he gets down the line of scrimmage, sheds the blocker and makes the tackle on the running back. I Demarcus Lawrence has been their top run defender for forever. I, like Neyland's going to be right there um, because he just, he's so advanced in terms of the ability to shed blockers and the power that he plays with in his recognition in the run game. You know, I, I didn't write down a star up like you and I saw some others blogging the boys uh, give Deuce Vaughn a star up. I was like, ah, okay. Some of your other star ups, I was like, eh, okay. Uh, it didn't jump out to me the same and I rewatched it dead sober. Yesterday morning. <laughs> uh, but Maris Leofotomy jumped out. Now, he, yes. got, he got the benefit. TV can make stars of people and can kind of affect and influence your opinion. The TV broadcast, by the way, I think that Isaiah Stanback does a really nice job on there on the game calls. Uh, but Leofow was getting the focus of the TV attention early on. And he was, uh, he was running around out there making plays. All of... After we, we didn't talk about him at all in camp. No, not much. Um, he was more of a training camp, mini camp guy or, or a mini camp OTA guy that we had talked about training camp. Not as much. Uh, he was their third round pick. Uh, yeah, he was their, their second pick in the third round. And he is, he's somebody that they really thought highly of when, when he came out in the draft uh, or when they drafted him, we asked on day three, we got a chance to interview on the draft show. Some of the Cowboys scouts, and we'd asked their national scout, Ross Winchie. We said, what was your favorite trait of any player in the draft that you studied this year? And he was like, well, not to toot our own horn. He's like, but honestly, it's probably Marist's play style. Like the way he plays, the intensity he plays with, the hair on fire stuff. And you saw when Booth gave up that big catch, which he was in position for, just gave up the ball. It was very Cheeto Awuzie play. When they get down there, first and 10 from the 12 inside the red zone, three straight plays, he put his entire skill set on display. The first one, he makes the big play to wrap up the ball carrier, gets off a block of a guy who's 100 pounds heavier than him, makes the run stop. Next play, has the patience, rushes the quarterback, forces Minshew to make a throw quicker than he wanted to, incomplete. And then on the third play, he was the one in coverage in the flat defending the ball. And it's like you saw every single last one of his traits, every single thing about his skill set that they like, all on display on three consecutive plays. He owned that red zone stand. It's Sean and Bobby Choppy's out for the week here on your home of America's team. Wanye Thomas making a play. Our boyfriend of the show, Willie Harvey, with a near pick six. Um, star down, Jalen Cropper. He lost that punt return fumble all on his own as well. And, of course, that leads to a discussion of how that is going to affect the wide receiver room. Yeah, it, it's, it's something where it's something on special teams. Should that impact him making the roster as receiver. But if you want to be a back end receiver, you need to contribute in other ways. And Cropper, man, you can't trying to do too much. You can't have that. Didn't make a lot of plays in the passing game in this last game. You've got to consistently show up. If you want to steal one of those roster spots, I would go star down to Matt. Well, let's go. And I know he had an awful, awful assignment of you get to block Max Crosby in a preseason game. I know that's tough. I was looking forward to Guyton Crosby. I know we got like one rep, I think, was all they, they threw over there. But well, let's go drawing that assignment. I know that's difficult. I know a lot of people say cut him a break. He's essentially a rookie. He was out all last year. If he wants to make this roster, he's going to have to block guys like Max Crosby if he ha- if he needs to step in. And for him to not even provide minimal resistance to what Crosby wanted to do on every single snap. That's bad. I think he's off the roster at this point. Did some positive stuff in the run game, but 
you've got to be able to provide even baseline pass protection. Jerry Jones stepped in it preseason game one, talking about no urgency to sign C.D. Lamb. Would it happen again on the fan pregame show with Christy Scales? Is there a target date in mind to get it done? Zero about anything. Not worried about a target date. Not worried about his shape. Uh, glad he's not out here uh, risking some injury tonight. Uh, <laughs> all of that is uh, not in any way impacting uh, uh, what uh, we're doing for the season. Of course, if he were here, do you think he would have one toe on this field? I hope not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, he wouldn't. And, right. and so uh, we're we're watching those kinds of things. He is so stubborn. He's he he might be more stubborn. I might as well just marry Jerry Jones and get and get the money. <laughs> he is so he's as stubborn as my wife. He's just trying to take it back to just like the all in stuff where he was just hanging on for dear life the whole off season to try to backtrack. He's trying to hold on to. I was just saying there was no urgency to have him play in the preseason. I was just saying there's no urgency to have him play in the exhibition games. So he went back to it twice uh, in that clip. Calvin Watkins reports the Cowboys offered Lamb. A new deal, slightly under 33 a year. It would make him the NFL's second highest paid receiver behind Jefferson. Jefferson is 35 a year. Again, slightly under 33, according to Calvin. But we also have follow-up reports, Mike Garofolo, that the structure, the cash flow, it's not there. Yeah, and that's something we've heard the the guaranteed money was an issue uh, from the Dallas Morning News report. Obviously, we, we've heard they haven't even come up to $33 million yet. That's the second report we'd seen of that. Uh, their issue is going to be cash flow because they're not going to want to front a bunch of cash to him while they're trying to do a bunch of different gymnastics with the cap. Uh, and so they're, they're going to try and lower that number as much as they can over the next two years. They're not going to want to throw him a bunch of guaranteed money. They're going to want those hits to be bigger down the line. It's, it's a similar situation, I would imagine, in terms of the gymnastics they're trying to do of, of what they did with Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott wanted a four-year deal for a certain amount of money, and the Cowboys were saying, dude, fine, but like we, we literally can't make it work with a four-year deal. We have to make it a six with two void years. Like This is the only way that we're going to be able to get it done is essentially turning it into a 10-year deal like on the books that then we can put escape patches in, and it sounds like they're in the same spot with Lamb. So is there anybody who you think, and I know we'll get to Trey Lance because that's what a lot of folks want to talk about, and I understand that. Is there anybody who you think inched closer or perhaps moved further away from making the roster? Because I think, I'm going to say this right, Deuce Vaughn got himself maybe back in the conversation and it felt like he had fallen out of the conversation. Yeah, Deuce Vaughn showed that he could be shifty again. Uh, The ability to make big plays is there, but I think the most important part is he... Like, there were a couple times whenever he moved the pile. You know, like, there were times when he was tackled and pushed forward for a couple more yards, showed that he could be a short yardage guy there, too. And the biggest thing he talked about, too, was just proving he could do pass protection. So those are two factors there. I'm not saying he looked like he was the the next coming of Emmett Smith or anything like that. But I he wasn't there last week. He was there this week, and he looked really good doing it. So, yes, back in the conversation, my trio would probably be Zeke, Dowdle and Deuce Vaughn and I think Deuce Vaughn can give you some big plays at many different times he could probably do it too kickoffs kick returns stuff like that as a uh, you know having two guys back there that can have that kind of shifty speed to go along with it on the flip side Jalen Cropper I know is somebody who jumps to mind because of the fumble yeah because of the drop on third down and I, I wonder if he has moved himself. Actually, I'm kind of curious if that not only hurts his chances, but would they just go with five receivers? Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take one more game to really start going looking sure, at that. Uh, sure. The but yeah, I I feel like I don't really think anybody separated themselves in that back portion of who name one because Billy. Uh, our our T Billy, yeah, I thought, hey man, he's going deep on yeah. that one, and then still, still nothing. So I just don't think anybody's really separated themselves. McMath didn't look great in the first one. He had a, was much, had a couple yeah. really good plays in this one. Uh, so hey man, if any time we can get a McMath on the team, I'm happy. Uh, I and Jalen Brooks really hasn't separated himself either. So Kevin, I'm still in that vein of maybe there's another option out there that you could add to this group. 
Uh, but I'm not I'm not completely sold on any of the receivers that are trying right now. And that's why I'm curious. I, I've seen lots of roster projections and stuff that have, you know, the Cowboys. Hey, you're going to go six at wide receiver. And I, I just wonder if you're not wowed by any of them, even though I know some of them were draft picks. If you're not wowed by any of them, do you not go longer on another position where you're like, I feel like there's actual competition that I need to stay on the team yeah, you need and go de- short at wide receiver. You need depth at your defensive end spots right now because there's been – that's one, one of the positions too, Kevin, that I'm like, do we have – can we find a guy that's going to raise their hand and say, I'm ready? Nealon's probably it right now for me. I like what I'm seeing out of Nealon. He looks big. He looks physical. He looks like, Mike says this a lot of times, he looks like an NFL player. He didn't look like a minor league football player. He looks like an NFL player with a lot of room to grow. So that's that position, too, where I'm like, I might need some more depth there. I would take it away from wide receiver uh, to to make some more space just because I don't know if I have it yet. Yeah. So that might be one of those spots. But I see what you're saying there, too. There are also a lot of linebackers that are just like, hey, I want to be in this thing. Leofow's the one, dude. I know he's a rookie and likely going to be on the team anyway or be in, involved in some way. Uh, he's one of the, the guys that I'm saying he took that step to, to go, man, everything he's done in camp, everything he's done in games just – I'll give him a thumbs up on this. So that's one of that's one of my guys, Kevin, from the defensive side. How important is it for Leah Fowl, especially because people think of him as the person that could have been a running back? <laughs> like uh, not not him the player, yeah. but at the spot. Yeah. I know people were like, well, obviously you're gonna go running back here, and they did not. And what if he thinks about that? If he I bet he doesn't. I bet that's not even doesn't even cross his mind. Whenever he's out there, but I would love for him to be like every time that's what he's thinking. He goes out to practice and he looks at there's just a big RB in his locker and he looks at it and he's like, I'm inspired to go out and be great today because everybody thinks I should have been a running back instead. Also, Kevin, two cornerbacks made names, n- names that I thought that were interesting. Obviously, come on, Hall yep. uh, with his uh, pick six for 69 yards. Nice. Oh, nice. And and he had he was really good all game long. But Booth got beat deep. Here's here's what I didn't know, Kevin. Okay. As you were watching this game, because Booth got beat deep before we saw anything else from him. And then from there on, he continued to tackle everything he saw and played very good in coverage while playing zone, not straight man up. Did you ever forgive him for, get, for getting beat deep? Because I know how you are. I did okay. because of Bobby Belt. Not to be confused with Brandon Belt yes. on the Rangers telecast. Because of Bobby Belt, who put out the following statistical tweet, which blew my mind. Andrew Booth, in 17 games last season, seven solo tackles, one assisted tackle. Andrew Booth on Saturday night, seven solo tackles, one assisted tackle. So he worked in a whole season of production into a preseason game. game. (laughs) Now, could you argue that concerns you on the other side? Sure, I get it, but... You we wouldn't have, have seen Deshaun Wright do that. It was a, it was a player oh for God. player swap. No way. And you get you look like you got to do that. You never saw that kind of outing from the other guy. He recovered well from that, and that's one of the biggest things. I know we were talking about the closer earlier. One of the biggest things that we talk about in terms of defensive backs, specifically cornerbacks, you have to be able to have a short memory. And so I appreciate that. After that, man, he was tackling all over the place. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I don't really know that I have any other players that I would say lost their spot. It's interesting that Mozzie wasn't there considering the, the allergic, allergic reaction. reaction. I want to hear more yeah. about that. I'm sure there are going to be a lot of questions about that. To football? Uh, he had an allergic reaction to something else. I don't remember what yeah, it was. I don't, maybe it was to football. Mike. I don't think that is <laughs> nope, the case. He's allergic to football. Um, here's, an, here's one of the guys, though, Kevin. Because last week, after we saw the video, I was like, that dude's gone. After he pushed over the Rams uh, personnel person, yeah. Huggins. Then you see him out there this week, and he's chasing down the quarterback. He never really got there because he's a defensive tackle, but he's chasing him down. I saw lots of hustle from him, and he was making people move too. I don't know if that was enough to get him there, but the defensive tackle rotation right now looks more competitive than I've seen it before, and that's promising because I feel like this is that's a competitive spot that needed to be competitive. Bringing in Jordan Phillips obviously gave them a little more push in this game, but there are some other guys that are like, hold on, I want to get my opportunity here. Now, from the 6, 7, 8, we'll definitely try to track this down. Uh, apparently, Sean Sharif this morning in the second segment might have said that Wanye Thomas was his boyfriend. 
which I, I mean, thought he was your boyfriend. I Wande Thomas is a great player, and I saw a couple of roster projections that don't have him on there, and I think that is just madness. He's flashed around the football. He's shown that he can, you know, make plays on the ball. That's the conversation that uh, that Hall said that. Uh, Al Harris has with them all the time. If you aren't touching the ball uh, every game, then you're not doing it right. And that's something that you see out of Wanye Thomas out of the safety spot. And he also comes up and makes some pretty big plays whenever he's near the line of scrimmage. Kevin, I'll be very honest. A lot of people that may have heard that interview with him when we were out in Oxnard yeah. might be like, hey, hold on, how did... How did that come about? Kevin was like, I want to go talk to Wanye Thomas right yeah. now. Let's go do this. And so he went and sought him out because you've been watching him in practice and you were just in awe. I feel like over the last two preseason games here, Kevin, you've gotten the look of him going, you, maybe you're having a, brown, a proud Brian moment where you're just like smiling because you're like, that's my guy right there. can only wish to replicate that amazing <laughs> photo. And that, that's where I also wonder about players. Let's say a player like Julius Wood. Would you take a player like, and maybe this is something we asked Mickey, maybe this is something that we asked Broadus when he comes on the C block at one o'clock. Would you try to take a player like Julius Wood and squeeze out one of those wide receivers? That's just my basic fundamental question. And I know every team goes through this every single year. Would I go light on a position or, you know, maybe bare minimum at a position so I can stock up with some other players that I'm like, they have more value to this team. And Julius Wood is somebody that I'm curious about, undrafted free agent. It feels like maybe over the last three weeks, you've seen something from him to make you go, I would like to keep him around. And I understand the practice squad, and some people have already asked about a few different players being on the practice squad. I'm not dismissing that whatsoever. I just, you don't want to risk the John Bridgeway situation where you're like, hey, let's see if we can get to the practice yeah. squad. No, we can't. And then you lost. Well, uh, a couple things I'm going to probably say this is as you ask questions like this as cuts start to come along and one more week I want to see one more week of this because sure. we've seen one we've seen two you've been able to see some guys have good and then bad some guys have bad and then good now what's the next step on can they do it again like very much like Jack Leiter like we do with him a lot of times okay well that was a good outing okay that was a crappy outing which one's him yeah you know what well, you got to really find that out and Kevin, anything I can do, anything we can do to keep Snoop around is is what I'm trying to figure out. How do we keep Snoop Connor on this team and give him some opportunities? Yes. I Look, I talked about that in training camp. I realized the odds were long and probably still are long against him. But it seems like when he gets the ball in his hand, something happens. And then, Corey, I know you mentioned him earlier. I noticed Mina Kimes was tweeting about Marshawn Nealon as well. Oh, really? And so, What'd she say? She said, through two games, really like the early returns on Cowboys second round pick Marshawn Nealon. Still putting it together as a rusher, but already looks like a plus run defender. Strength yes. plus twitch really pops, which is kind of everything that you were hoping for and still could have hoped for from Mozzie Smith. And that's great if he can get to the quarterback. We all agree on that. But if you can stop the run at even an average level, let alone a plus level, well, welcome to the team. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, um, strength is the first thing that really stands out because I've seen him push people back, you know, push tackles back. You can't block him with a tight end. You're going to have to do a couple different things with him, but he does push people behind, uh, back into the into the play, and I like that. It's the the next phase for him, and Broadus has said this, and that's really where, where it stands is can he add moves can he play well with his hands so that he can get tackles off of him and make plays on the quarterback? That's the next phase for him because he's doing well in the run defense part of it. He collapses plays. He makes things happen. There was a moment where he kind of got pushed out like early in the game, yeah. and there was a run his way, but from there on, he was he was really good. I really like what they – that's a second-round a second round draft pick that a lot of people were like, who? And here you are watching him play, and you're like, now I know what Will McClay and, sure. and staff were looking at. So in case you're keeping tabs on these type of things, the Dallas Cowboys are, in fact, victorious 27-12 to 12 over the Raiders. I, <laughs> are we catching up now to Baltimore in, uh, in preseason wins? I, I mean, well, you would only be one Baltimore never lost behind, still? right? Uh, so they're one and one again. Don't know if you can. Care if you about start such off things. 0 2, your percentages of making the playoffs. No, go that way is that down. is in the regular season. That is not in the preseason. 
Didn't the Cowboys go three and one in the in the nineteen eighty nine preseason? Then they went one and fifteen. It didn't matter. Just like Emmett didn't matter in ninety three. They scored two touchdowns. I mean, like Trey Lance scores two touchdowns. Last week we were like, "Is a touchdown ever going to happen in the preseason?" Sure. I feel like it is like, "What is going on?" They he threw and ran. They were one. able to manufacture two two touchdowns. Yeah, it was a really nice pass uh, in the end zone. That was that was one that I really liked there. And then there was a there was the run the the breakaway Flournoy, if you Mike if you get a chance to go rewatch the the Flournoy touchdown, he makes a move that just basically broke the cornerback inside. He didn't know what to do. Once he made that move, then he he easily got to his corner, and that's a pass, Kevin, that we've seen Trey Lance fail over and over yeah. and over at, and he looked really comfortable throwing that. Obviously, he was wide open. Like being as wide open as he was is a huge factor, but he made the pat and made the play, and it was really nice to see that from him. Brian's an Oxnard. You looked at this film, Brian? I have. Can I ask Woolchuck a question real quick? Let's sure. do it. Real quick, Woolchuck. Yep. Izzy Hall Booth. You can only keep one. Who are you keeping? Uh Hall. Are you? Yeah. Can you give me a reason? Uh, I like his ability to play inside, and I feel like he can still play outside. I think it's and a who's rarity. Hall? Who's Hall? Uh, K- come on, Hall. Come on, who Hall. Had the pick six. Yeah, 43. He's, and and nice. he is a North Texas guy. Okay, I will admit there might be a slight bias there. But, I mean, Booth did impress me with the tackling stuff. And, sure. and, the, and the stat that Bobby put out there was incredible. I mean, the way he bounces back, gives up that deep ball. But I think Izzy... I don't know where they want to play him right now. And uh, to me, I, I think Hall's young. I think there's upside there. And it's it's rare to find a guy that you feel confident that can kick inside and play the slot at a high level. Hall played the most snaps of anybody on defense the other day. Well, as far as the secondary guys. Hmm. But McQuamu had the better metrics of all the of all the, those guys that I mentioned. Very nice. I mean, when you just, you know, if you look at, but the thing about, the thing you would say about Izzy is, McQuamu was that, okay, he could play slot and he could play safety and he could play corner, mm-hmm. but you could kind of take the safety part out of it now because you got enough safeties. You don't need another safety. Yeah. Redundant there. So you have to think about, though, okay, who can help you probably on the outside more? I mean, we've seen Hall primarily play all inside stuff. So, you know, I wonder, I wonder what they're thinking, but... If you look at the metrics of how the game broke down where, you know, the number of coverage snaps and number of targets and number of reception, he, he, they were 0 for 4 throwing the ball at Izzy in that football game the other day. We have some stock up, stock down here for you, Brian. I was wondering yeah. if we could start here with Cooper Beebe. Blogging the boys gave him stock up. Would you agree with that? Yeah, stock up. I mean, he's gotten better at uh, the awareness aspect of the game. In the Rams game, they ran a twist stunt that he was a little late to adjust. This time around, much better with the awareness, keeping the head on the swivel. The one thing that I did see bad that he was able to improve in the second time it happened to him in the game was second-level block, he goes out in an angle where he goes where the guy was and not where the guy's going to end up. Hmm. And then the next time around, he's like, uh-uh, you're not going to fool me this time. So then he gets second level, and then the guy, he he makes contact there and gets his block. So... There's there's been improvement with him with his ability the combo blocks when he was working with uh, with Bass and those guys uh, you know awesome Richards they were getting some movement in that in that in that down those down linemen for the Raiders and then getting a the guy up and that's how you're able to run the football you get a guy up second level you can do a lot of good things running the ball okay let's work our way backwards from the draft here and go to round two where Marshawn Nealon at defensive end would you give him a stock up. Yeah, I'd give him a stock up. Really, the run aspect of him when he plays, uh, you know, the one tackle, they call it a stuff. He played down the line of scrimmage. He kept his outside arm free and then squeezed it. And then he was able to make the play right there. He's a tough guy to run on. The pass rush stuff is coming around. Um, He's doing a little bit better job of getting, whether he's on the left or right. If he's on the right side of the defense rush, he's doing a better job of getting his left shoulder underneath the blocker. But he's got to work on closing the angle a little bit quicker, but he's getting better at it overall. Did Tyler Guyton play? Tyler Guyton played quite well. Yeah, nice. and the problem with Tyler Guyton, man, we're doing Krusty's Corner here right now is what we're doing. <laughs> okay. uh, this, yeah, I'll move just, on. Can we just carry? No, it's fine. Uh, I, could, I could talk about other things. The, um, the thing about with Tyler Guyton is his hands. I, I guarantee you when Duke, Manyweather, when he looks at the film, when he watches and he talks to Tyler about his hands – 
that's the number one thing. Pro Football Focus, I had him as one of the you know one of the uh, the top linemen, rookie linemen, and so that's really cool. But he's got to get better with his hands. Like he's playing against guys that he can get away with it when his hands go outside. And I got several clips I could show you guys down the road. But when his hands get outside the framework, he gets knocked back. And then, but he's good enough of an athlete to recover because what he'll try and do is he'll try and butt a guy. He'll take his head and drop it and hit a guy in the head with head and then turn and try and grab the guy and then reset his hands. Man, if he wasn't such a good athlete, he would put himself in some terrible pass blocking positions just because of his hand placement. But he's so damn strong once he gets a hold of you. I mean, his finishing ability he's has good. been on display. He could be off balance. He could be off balance. He could be off balance, get on balance, and then keep on balance as he's as he's working through the block. It's really impressive how he's able to play that way. Hands are bad Special. though. Yeah. Cowboys know how to find him though. Yep. Do you think it's easy to clean up the hands or hard? Man, I, I think Duke is going to – Duke and others, Solari, who, you know, everybody who works with him and who he trusts and talks, Duke's going to see the tape and give him some some pointers. But but his way, instead of punch and sit, his way is butt outside, then inside with his hands. He's going he's gonna to play some guys that are going to swim him. There's a couple of different times in the Rams game and then also the, in the, excuse me, the Rams scrimmage and then the game the other night where he gets swum because he's he's so he gets over the tops of his feet and then he can't recover back like you know like he gets too far over his feet yeah. and it throws him off balance is it legal to throw a knee to like the solar plexus <laughs> Man, I've seen. Some, I think they'll call you for tripping for doing that. High. Yeah, I don't yeah, know they, they, I was they, tackle. Yeah, they 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 call tripping for you on that. If you throw if you throw any type of a leg really? leg whip or something, yeah. they, they're going to call tripping. Well, that'd be a yeah. trip where your your yeah. you know leg is going out fully extended. You know, I wonder. No, no, there's you, there's you know. like I've seen guys I've seen guys do the spinning back kick to trip guys up that wow. way too you know but it's a real talent yeah it's a real real talent for sure okay uh let's jump over here to uh, nbc sports <laughs> we go to patrick doherty who uh posted some nfl gm rankings i was shocked that the cowboys haven't made the nfc title game in 30 years the and they say they have the ninth best front office yeah. isn't that bizarre like what are we prioritizing here hitting on first round picks being able to build a roster or actually knowing what it takes to win the Super Bowl, it's just that's crazy to me. Kind of look at it as maybe they're kind of giving Will McClay a little bit of – Yeah, hey, he's good at stuff. his job. Yeah, he's good at his job. And, and if he yeah. was the guy they setting woke up. the philosophy they, – they Yeah, they weren't worth a damn two years ago drafting. But they – like Will Will <laughs> yeah. came back in the room or somebody – Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were not like good. Yeah, this year. Yeah, it looks like a big win so far this year. It really does. I mean – Okay, so you go through the. Let's go with the teams ahead of the Cowboys okay, here. Yeah. I bet what we're going to find is postseason success. And then they get the Cowboys at nine. It's like, well, drafting players. Yeah. Uh, Andy Reid, Chiefs, of course, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch with the Niners. Howie Roseman with the Eagles coming in at three. You love when Howie Roseman gets credit like that. Don't I, you? I mean, it dunks all over the Cowboys. It you does. know, and yeah. I, I, I think he's showing that you don't. Even if you don't draft as good as the Cowboys, you can totally kick their ass if you're t- constantly working for trades, yeah. free agency, and you know how to manage the cap. Actually, managing the cap, I think, is the, the Cowboys' biggest yeah. flaw. Sean McVay and Les Snead with the Rams, of course. Mm. Eric DeCosta with the Ravens yeah. coming in at five. I don't know about that one. Brad they, Holmes, pretty good that? team though. They got a pretty good team there. They, they, they over the years well. they've been they've been they've had the same coach for it seems like ever now. But yeah. they've got some consistency there. Yeah. Well, but it was Ozzie Newsom that won the Super Bowls, right? That is true. Yes. yes. The cost was, was on was the staff with him though. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Brad Holmes with the Lions, getting um, better there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got a great coach too. I mean the the Ben Johnson hire the yeah. the drafting they've they've kind of um, you they know turned gone, it around yeah and now you, now maybe you look at the Lions as as not a team that's haunted by organizational failures for decades but one that's changed their culture Matt Millens yeah. no doubt Brandon Bean with the Bills okay. you know I think he belongs it's it's Patrick Mahomes that's the their biggest obstacle to to glory yeah I think the thing with Bean is pretty interesting he might have lost his window. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Last close. year, I, I think yeah, was their he, chance. He might have, he might have Casey lost. At home. We'll see how good of a GM he is now because he's going to he's going to have to rebuild his team. I yeah. think that's why they changed. Uh, what was it? OCs like mid season, even though yeah. they were performing. Ken Dorsey. They said, mm-hmm. yeah. get get. And yeah. then Brian Gutenkunst. Uh, Brian Gutenkunst. Yeah. Gutekunst. 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 Okay. Yeah. 
he's a Brian's a Brian's kind of a, a guy that flies under the radar, you know, that doesn't have an ownership that he has to work under. But he's a good guy as far as like I say, he'll try and sign his own and draft. That's something really, really big for him too. Your former intern in Green Bay, now with the Seahawks, John Schneider is in the spot immediately after the Cowboys, and uh, I don't know how he's trailing uh, the Jones boys, but but he is. I mean. One He'll have some crazy win. ass drafts too yeah. every once in a while. See, he dra- yeah. yeah, he drafts uh, not the best. Yeah, but they've managed to now build a playoff team. Right, find a good enough bridge quarterback till they can draft they've, one. He's, and yeah, he's done that, that roster's damn good. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean that roster can go out. up against everyone in the NFL. They just need to find a quarterback that legitimately can can win them a serious game. And you know you you roll from the Pete Carroll era era and and uh, you know name a good head coach in uh, Mike McDonald who was, you know, um, you know giving you that that guiding hand. All right, it yeah, is the G- guy yes. who's low here is Nick Casario of the Texans. Don't you think that guy should be getting a little bit yes. more love right now? Like that's yeah. a, that's an organization that's completely yeah. But that was around. that was a dumpster fire under the butt chin guy, right? Yeah, yeah, no butt chin. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know Nick Casario is a, is a hire that not a lot of people liked. Yeah. So maybe it's somebody that was anti Casario and doesn't think that he deserves the credit. You know, so yeah. but uh, you know, ho- hopefully the Cowboys can get this right and actually deserve a top ten uh, ranking next year.